Welcome to Honest Whispers Preview to Sale. On this video, I'll be previewing Iki Tusen, or known in the US as Dragon Destiny, which also had a manga released prior to the anime under the name Battle Vixens. Sonsaku Hakufu, 1A scale pre painted figure. It was released by Kotobukiya back in 2007. It's based on the character design by Yuji Shiozaki who is the original writer and illustrator of the show Ikitusen. This figure is sculpted by Masaru Nakajima which actually is credited on the side of the box. And this figure which basically comes with the base although the base is slightly elevated and the figure is slightly elevated off the base give or take this figure is approximately nine inches tall I'm gonna go over six different categories to review this first category is design which basically covers the look, the concept, and the pose. And you can see right off the bat, she has a very dynamic pose. She's jumping in the air. Uh, she is supposed to have the sword in her hand, although it does come separated. And she is supposed to be jumping in the air because she, there is a sacred bead on the base. And in the show, there is no sacred bead that size. You might see this a lot in different anime as well. But in this show, all the sacred fighters have a bead, uh, or at least an earring in the shape of that sacred bead. So you can see hers right there, the same green color. And it's also translucent, so that's a nice little touch to it. So beyond that... Um, I think it's a nice unique look to it you can see the sample here with the sword she's holding on the back so when I look at this prototype picture and then look at the real figure I mean the quality the look and everything pretty much dead on you don't feel like you're getting something worse like some other figures that I actually own and the way her skirt is flowing in the air it looks like she's at the peak of her jump or just about to start landing but kind of adds a little fan service just like the show there and it's not like overly like sexualized or anything like that or in your face uh, you know <laughs> like overly like sexy pose or anything like that so nice little balanced touch uh, it's kind of like one of those cute and sexy at the same time so nice good balance well thought out design and look unique i give the design score a perfect 10 out of 10. i mean it really suits her the way uh, just the character itself matches the theme of the character and the show so very very well thought out next category is sculpting which basically covers uh, the details and the quality of the sculpt or the molding and with this even at very up close uh, very hard to see any flaws at all you can tell that the, the this figure it has its parts uh, basically built or molded separately, painted separately if necessary, and then assembled together. So that really adds a lot of nice quality to it. Uh, you can see a lot of details on the hair, the fingers, and even on her costume. And to get a better look, I'll show you in a different angle and different lighting. So. As you can see, down to the little wrinkles and stuff on her sleeves, costume, sweater, her skirt, uh, really good uh, high quality details, even her socks, 
has a nice natural look to it, realistic look to it. So definitely makes the a 2D animated character or figure uh, really look realistic in 3D. So nice touches. Even the fingers, the way her left hand has all her fingers spread out and straightened. Everything's nicely proportioned. Uh, her right hand, because you can't see the opening where she holds the sword, uh, makes the kind of the sword an optional. And even on the details of the sword, it's it's a simple sword, but you can see pretty good details on the handle and the and the hilt of the sword. So like. And everything, like the blade is very nice and smooth, so overall quality of it, everything is nice. Now, even though this is listed for sale, this is for the customers. This isn't, the only, this, the only flaw that I could see is that on the hair or the head, it's basically two different pieces and where it's attached. On the right side, you can't really see the seam line very uh, well fitted. On the left side of her head, you can see a slight seam line right there. It's, it's a lot darker and thicker. Now keep in mind, there's no actual gap. But what that tells me is that the back piece is slightly uh, bigger than the front piece. Or at least, at least the opening. That's why you get this... Uh, side of the edge of the back piece kind of sticking out and creating that seam line which you don't see as or at all almost on the right side so uh, it's very minor and you probably won't see it uh, especially when you're looking at this in a straight angle so it's a very minor thing but it's still it's still a you know it's still a flaw so due to that I give the sculpting score a near perfect 9 out of 10. Next category is colors which basically covers the painting or just the accuracy of the color uh, and the quality of the colors or painting and the quality of the paint or color application. And I keep mentioning color application because not everything here is painted. There is some imprinting involved whether if it's the eyes or even the skirt, the plaid lines on the skirt uh, definitely show signs of imprinting. Other than that, uh, you see like her basically her uh, necktie and gloves definitely uh, show sign uh, signs of hand painting. Even the earring. Uh, which is actually well done for that angle. Of course, it was probably painted before it was assembled, so you don't get these uh, really tough corners. That's why her eyebrows are painted perfectly. Although it's hard to kind of see here, which is, you know, imprinted actually. Uh, and of course, the, the sword handle uh, shows some signs of painting. Uh, Everything is pretty much well done. It's very small, minor, you know, flaws or mistakes, but I do see some bleeding on the right glove. There is some bleeding onto the skin color, although the line is still pretty uh, straight, but you can see that it's kind of over there where the edge is. And here, some of the blue, uh, it's really hard to tell, and I'd rather not say it's it's a flaw or anything like that. But I feel like on the top angle, it just seems like there's some blue bleeding. Either way, she'll be holding the sword. You probably won't see it as much. And a lot of the attention does go towards uh, just her face and body. But a flaw is a flaw. Therefore, the colors, I give the score a near perfect score. 9 out of 10. Otherwise, the accuracy of the color, everything, the look, very well done. And that's also the combination of the color of the PVC, the base color of the PVC itself. They really did uh, blend all the techniques to just make it a high quality figure.
Next category is packaging. And this packaging right off the bat, it is a window box, four color window box packaging. And even though you only see basically three colors here, you do see all the, you know, basically the sample that would be uh, other than that, um, you just see some little, like, not really gray, it's kind of more like bronze, either way. But I like the look and feel of it. Uh, it's not just a simple green when you start looking closer. It is kind of like shaded green or like it has like a blend to it. So you can see how it darkens out black. And then it kind of shades into like a lighter gray, a green. So that's a nice touch to it. Uh, the logos and everything, uh, just well thought out, well designed. You see the character right here. The sides are the same, but they used a nice inverted color scheme. This would be the white background with black printing, and then the black printing with white, or I'm sorry, black background with white printing. So exactly the same but just by inverting the colors kind of adds a nice little touch to it and makes it look like you have two different sides which I already showed on the back you see the sample of the figure itself and then of course the top window it's not just a simple circle but rather it's kind of cut out in the shape uh, to f you know to fit the, the gloves the gloves, I mean the claws of the dragon itself. And of course the bottom, you get your, pretty much your, I don't want to say typical, but your Kotobukiya bottom, which basically if you collect like the Bishojo line, which this actually came out before the Bishojo, uh, you'll kind of see that uh, they all look pretty much the same, especially when it comes to the Kotobukiya. So packaging, uh, you can't go wrong with it. Very nice uh, look. And you can see pretty much everything on the uh, of the figure, at least from the front side. Now, if I could design something, maybe I might have add something where you could add like a small window here somewhere, uh, shape it out or just different with a different layout. Other than that, I mean, the box, you really can't go wrong with this. So I give it a near perfect score on this as well, a 9 out of 10. Next category is value, which basically covers uh, the price versus quality and also uh, the original price versus the aftermarket price. And this one, it's not that popular here in the states uh but just out of all the uh things that's been produced and even imported there are some po definite huge uh popularity in japan and a pretty good uh following here in the states as well especially because they pretty much released like three of the four seasons of dragon destiny i believe either way um this one is has a nice look, a very unique, um, and I can't even say kind of on the popular side. Uh, this originally, when it came out, was around $45, $50. Of course, back then with the yen exchange and import price, uh, really depends on where you bought it. And also whether if you had it shipped or not. Right now, this is on sale or at least from what's available either to uh, ebay or amazon the cheapest i found is probably around 70 dollars and although you do have to be careful there may be like an import tax on it which or, or some kind of tariff uh for importing this either from japan or somewhere so you might be careful, that could be an add-on price, especially because when you look at the uh, description, they actually mention that on for international bidders. And I have seen one used for like around $40. That's with no box at all. So 
the value really isn't up there, uh, especially for something that's over 10 years old. I would have expected this to be uh, much higher, although I have seen new ones listed for like 70, not 70, I'm sorry, like $80. The cheapest one is around like $70. So, so maybe uh, it really depends, but also looking at the number of the listed products, there's quite a few uh, compared to something that's a lot more rare. So that, that would kind of hurt the aftermarket value, it would take longer for something like this to increase in value if you're looking for it as an investment. So due to that, uh, although it is still up there, uh, it's not that high up there. So that's why I give it a slightly above average 6 out of 10 on the value score. So final category is overall, which basically accumulates the five prior categories, design, sculpting, colors, packaging, and value. And it's pretty much... Uh, especially if you if you're a fan of Sonsaku Hakufu, uh, as I mentioned, one of the nicest figures out there, definitely unique in the pose, and it's not overly sexualized like some Ikitusen uh, figures or statues, where they might be in a very sexualized position pose, or even have a switch out clothes or even removable clothes so with this uh, I like it overall I like the look I like the quality and um, even Sonsaku Hakufu like she's probably my second favorite out of the show uh, Ryomu Shime being my favorite of the show so either way uh, regardless of that uh, this figure itself is still very cool. Uh, I give the overall score a high 9 out of 10. So to recap, design 10 out of 10. Sculpting 9 out of 10. Colors 9 out of 10. Packaging, 9 out of 10. Value, 6 out of 10. And overall, 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Eat your vitamins and say your prayers.